In this lesson, we're going to be looking at word problems that involve linear equations, and we're going to work our way through this graphic organizer. The first thing we're going to do is, given the word problem, we're going to write an equation that matches it. Then we're going to graph it and look at the slope and the y-intercept and what each of those represent. And we're going to do that together. B and C, we're going to kind of do that together. And then we're going to solve this little problem right here. So let's work through this equation. It says a pool that contains 25,000 gallons of water is draining at a rate of 500 gallons per hour. Write an equation that represents the amount of water in the pool after X hours. Well, let's identify our variables here. So it already tells you, the problem tells you, write an equation that represents the amount of water in the pool after X hours, which means X will represent the number of hours and then y will represent what? Our other variable? The amount of water in the pool. Let's say amount in gallons. Let's do that. Not the amount of gallons, but the amount in gallons. And now let's write our equation. This is a, a rate and a y-intercept kind of a, a word problem. So we're going to be using slope-intercept form. And how do I know that I'm using slope-intercept form? I know that because I have a rate of 500 gallons per hour and then this problem also tells us how many gallons of water is in the pool to start out with so that's some when i'm given a constant rate and a beginning amount that's how i know that i'm going to use this form of a linear equation the slope intercept form so let's write our equation here what's it going to look like well the amount of water in the pool is going to be well, if i start out with 25 gallons and I'm draining at a rate of 500 gallons per hour, that's 25,000 minus 500x, but I'm actually gonna write it in slope-intercept form, so it's gonna look like this. Negative 500 times x plus 25,000, because I'm writing it in slope-intercept form. And actually, with that said, let's move on to parts B and C. So over here in part C, it says identify the slope and y-intercept, describe what they represent. So first, let's identify our slope and y-intercept, and we'll come back to that. Our slope is the number in front of the x. It's our rate of change, our constant rate of change, and it's negative 500. So because my slope is negative, whenever I graph my line, is it going to look like this where it rises from left to right, or is it going to look like this where it falls from left to right? It's going to look like this because that's what a negative slope looks like. So now my y-intercept is this number all by itself, and the y-intercept is when x is 0. So if I were to plug in 0 for x right here, I would get 25,000 for y. So that's my y-intercept. It's just, it's going to look like this whenever I graph it. 0, 25,000. So let's move on and let's graph it. How do I graph a linear equation in slope-intercept form? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this b value, my beginning point. That's my y-intercept. 0, 25,000. And then from there, I'm going to create additional points using this slope right here, negative 500. So negative 500 over 1, well, let's see what that would look like. Negative 500, if I multiply that by 10, it'd be negative 5,000, and then 1 times 10 is 10. So I'm actually, I could do this, where I go down 5,000 over 10, if you want to graph it like that. And actually, I can create additional points doing just that. Go down 5,000 over 10, down 5,000 over 10. Doing that is the same thing as going down 500 over 1. Okay, so some additional points on this line would be 10, this is 20,000, this is 20 and 15,000. And what does that mean? All that means is that after 20 hours, there are 15,000 gallons left in the pool. Okay, so let's look at now what the slope and y-intercept each represent. So the slope in this, in this situation represents the amount of water in gallons that's drained per hour. So it's the amount of water in gallons drained per hour. 
And because it's being drained, that's how we know that we have a negative slope. It's not water that we're adding to the pool. We are draining it, we are removing it. So negative 500. Then that 25,000, that's the initial amount of water in the pool. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't connect my dots over here. So when it's draining, whoop. And really, I don't need to draw an arrow at the end because once it's all the way drained and there's no water left in the pool, it just stops. So we don't really care about anything else, um, the, that line extending. Okay, our domain is just from zero to 50. And that would be it. That's really all we care about in this situation. So how long will it take to drain the pool? Well, how many, how long? Okay, well, that means we're looking for X to drain the pool. Well, that means when the amount of gallons in the pool is zero. So if here's my equation, y equals negative 500 times x plus 25,000, I'm looking for when y is zero. And then all I need to do is get x all by itself. And I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm going to subtract 25,000 over here, and I get negative 25,000 equals negative 500 times x. And then when I divide both sides by negative 500, I get that x equals 50, which means it will take 50 hours to drain the pool. Therefore, it will take 50 hours to drain the pool. And if you look at your graph, could you look at your graph and answer this problem? We're looking for when the y value is zero. Well, right here, 50, zero. That's my point that lets me know, hey, it's going to take 50 hours for the volume to be zero gallons. Let's move on to our second example of a word problem that involves a linear equation. But in this example, you'll see that we're not exactly given a rate of change and an initial amount. We're given a combination of items. And so when we're given a combination of items, we're gonna use this standard form of a linear equation. And we're gonna work through the same process that we just did. So let's go through the problem. Reed ordered a combination of enchiladas and tacos at a restaurant. Enchiladas cost $2.50 each and tacos cost $2 each. His bill, with 30, his bill was $30, not including tax. Write an equation in standard form that models the possible combinations of enchiladas, X, and tacos, Y, ordered. So the first thing I like to do is label what my variables represent, and that actually tells us here. Enchiladas are going to be the variable of X, or they're going to represent X, and Y is going to represent tacos. So I love this combination of items in standard form because I just work through, it, it literally gives me like all of my information in one or the first maybe one or two sentences. So enchiladas cost $2.50 each. Enchiladas are X, so that's going to be 2.5 times X. Tacos cost $2 each. That's plus 2Y. And what was the total bill? His bill was $30. So there's our equation. And we're just going to leave it in standard form. And we're actually going to graph it using our x and y intercepts because how many points do you need to graph a line? You just need two. So we're going to first find our y intercept, which the y intercept is when x is 0. So if I plug in a 0 right here for x, I'm left with 2y equals 30. How do I solve that? Divide both sides by 2, and I get y equals 15. And if I'm going too fast for you, just pause the video, and or you can rewind whatever you need to do. So my y-intercept is at 15. Here's my y-axis. Where is it going to be on my y-axis? At 15. You can see that I'm counting by 2s, so that's 14, 15, right there. And I'm actually going to write that over here in box C. My y-intercept is 0, 15. We plugged in 0 for x. We got 15 for y. 
So now let's move on to my x-intercept. The x-intercept is when y is 0. So if I plug in 0 for y, I'm just left with 2.5 times x equals 30. If I divide both sides by 2.5, I get that x equals 12. So my x-intercept, which here's my x-axis, is at 12. How do I write that as an ordered pair? Let's put that in box C over here. 12, 0, 0. I went right 12 units, and then I didn't go up or down at all. So everything on this line right here, which we can talk about if it should be a line when you get into Algebra 2, because it really shouldn't, but that's our line right there, OK? So that line represents all of the possible combinations of the number of tacos that Reed could have ordered with the number of enchiladas that would have yielded a $30 bill, OK? And actually, it wouldn't really be a line, but it is for all intents and purposes in Algebra 1. So what does this represent? So let's look at our x and y intercepts here, and let's talk about what each of those represent, because this line is just the possible combinations. So the x-intercept, well, what is that? The x-axis, or the x variable, represents the number of enchiladas. So the y variable represents the number of tacos. So this point right here at 12, 0 represents the number of enchiladas ordered if zero tacos were ordered. That's what that represents. The number of enchiladas ordered if zero tacos were ordered. That's just if, right? These are just possible combinations, which means my y-intercept up here at 0, 15, that's going to represent the number of tacos ordered if zero enchiladas were ordered. So the number of tacos ordered if, just if, because these are just possible combinations, zero enchiladas were ordered. So that's just what this represents. And we're just making connections between the problem, the equation, the graph, what what our x-intercept and y-intercept represent. And now let's solve this problem right here. It says, if Reed ordered eight enchiladas, that means if x is eight, how many tacos, we're looking for y, did he order? So let's write our initial equation. 2.5x plus 2y equals 30. Because really, if you're just given this problem right here and this question, you really don't need a graph and the intercepts to solve it. You just need to know what to plug in where. But I really like you to make connections between the graph and the intercepts and the problem and then this right here, part D. So we're looking for when x is 8. So if I were to replace the variable x with h and then solve for y, I'll get how many tacos Reed ordered if he ordered 8 enchiladas to have gotten a bill that was $30. So then I'm just going to solve this. I'm going to get the y all by itself. 2.5 times 8 is 20. And then I'm just solving a two-step equation now. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. So I get 2y equals 10. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get y equals 5. So therefore, read ordered 5 tacos. 5 tacos. Let's look at the last type of problem, word problem that you'll see that involves a linear equation. And in these types of problems, you will use point slope form of a linear equation. And it looks like that. This is when you're given a constant rate and or some type of relationship between your variables. So we're going to go through this graphic organizer the same as we've done the previous two examples. And let's get started. It says Kara spends $4 a day for a fancy coffee drink. At the end of seven days, she has $12 left. Write an equation in point slope form that represents this situation. So this actually already tells you what the variables are going to represent. X is number of days. Y is the money left. Well, then what's my rate? If she spends 
a day or four dollars per day four dollars every day four dollars each day that's your rate which means my slope is is it four or would it be negative four it's actually negative four so why would it be negative four and not positive four because she's spending money so now if we talk about like what our x and y variables represent I say x equals number of days, y is money left. When I write an ordered pair, it looks like this, which means at the end of seven days, she has $12 left. At the end of seven days, because x is number of days, she has $12 left. Y is the money left. So here is an example where I'm given a slope and a relationship between variables. I'm given a point on the line. So now let's write this equation in point slope form. Y minus the Y value, which is 12, equals my rate, which is negative four, times X minus the X value. And now we're actually gonna convert this to slope intercept form. So what do I do first? I distribute that negative four into each term on the inside of the parentheses. So I get negative four X plus 28, and then I'm gonna add 12 to both sides y equals negative 4x plus 40. And we're going to do parts b and part c at the same time. So whenever we're given a linear equation in slope intercept form, we need to make sure we can identify the slope and the y-intercept. So my slope is the number in front of the x. It's that rate of change, that $4 a day that Kara is spending, and it's negative 4. And actually, let's go ahead and write what that represents. What does that negative four represent? The money spent per day. And I'm gonna underline per day because that's a constant rate. Every day she's spending $4. And then that y-intercept is positive 40. The y-intercept is when x is zero, so I really like students to write it as an ordered pair so that you just make sure that you get your zero in the right place. And then what does that represent? The initial amount that Kara has to spend. And now let's graph it over here. So if my y-intercept is 40, I'm gonna graph it right here. And what I would encourage you to do right now is try to find some other points on the line that you could graph and then graph your line here. Okay, so another point on the line is 520. That's another point on your line if you're doing a slope of negative 4 over 1 or 10, 0. That's another point on your line. And here's what my line looks like. So now let's go to part D. And actually, this line, you know, it's very, very interesting because if you're spending $4 a day, is it every single point on this line? It's not really, but that's something that you can really discuss in like maybe Algebra 2 or Pre-Cal. So let's move on to Part D. How many total days, total days, okay, that's X. That's what we're looking for because X represents the number of days. How many total days will it take for Kara to spend all of her money? Well, that means when she has nothing left. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that slope intercept form, negative 4x plus 40, and I'm going to plug in 0 for y. And you might be able to look at your graph and determine your answer from it. You probably can. What is x when y is 0? Right there, but let's do it algebraically. So I'm getting x all by itself. I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. And now I'm gonna divide everything by negative four and I get 10 equals X. So therefore it will take Kara 10 days to spend all her money. And that concludes your notes over word problems that involve linear equations. I know it's a lot, I know it's difficult, but I hope it was helpful.